Come to Jesus and your life will be easy. You can mark that down as something that Jesus never said, nor any of his apostles, nor any other first century Christian ever said or wrote. They actually said quite the opposite, that coming to Jesus would in this world complicate things a lot more. We would face pressures from those outside of the body of Christ, and persecutions and tribulations and afflictions would come upon us. Jesus never promised that it would be easier, but he did promise that he would walk with us in the midst of those struggles. And so the biblical admonition is for us to be patient in tribulation, according to Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. And so for the next few moments, I'd like for us to meditate upon that particular phrase, to be patient in tribulation found in Romans 12 and verse 12. Let's do that by looking at three things together. First of all, let's look at the location of that statement. Where does that statement fit in the overall context of Romans? Then I want us to look at the instruction itself. Just look at those few words to be patient in tribulation. What does it really mean? And then I want us to close with several admonitions about how we can be patient in tribulation. So first of all, let's consider the location of this statement. Notice it's in the book of Romans. In Romans, we are dealing with a condensed Bible, so to speak. The comparison to it would be Ephesians, which is an even more condensed version, where in the first half of the book, you're dealing with what God has done to save man, that people might be justified and be counted righteous in his sight. And then you're dealing with the effects of that. How then should those justified people live? And that's the way Romans is divided. When you just a cursory reading of the book, you see that division. Like in Romans 1 and verse 17, which is a quotation of Habakkuk or Habakkuk, depending upon which individual you're talking to. Habakkuk 2 and verse 4, the just shall live by faith. And so chapters 1 through 11 talk to us about who are the just, who are the righteous, how were they made righteous. And then it talks to us about how they live after becoming righteous. Now, as we think about this section, Romans 12, verse 12, our verse of consideration falls under this second section, how do justified people live. And this chapter in chapter 12 really serves as an overview for the things that will be said later. Because in verses 1 and 2, he says that Christians change the way they view the God who is above them. We're to be transformed, not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed because of the mercies of God, the things that have been done for us according to the scheme of redemption. Then he says in verses 3 through 13, this is how you act with those on the inside. He's talking to the, those inside the body of Christ. This is how I want you to behave. And then in verses 14 to seven, verses 14 to 21, he says, this is how I want you to behave toward those on the outside. And that's how things will follow in the next few chapters. Chapter 13, this is how you relate to people on the outside, the government. Chapter 14, this is how you relate to people on the inside with conscience issues. Chapter 15, this is how you relate to people on the outside, preaching the gospel. Chapter 16, these are Paul's relationships on the inside of the church. And so, that's how this particular chapter is put together in its section. Now, in this particular paragraph, in verses 9 through 13, we have a list of 10 imperative statements. And this was common in this culture to give a list, to string together a list of moral obligations. And so, as we find ourselves here in verse 12, he says this, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Now, that's the location of our verse. Now, let's consider the instruction of it. First, he gives us a disposition to be patient, and then a situation in tribulation. So, let's begin with the disposition. Be patient. Now, the idea behind being patient is remaining under something. And as William Barclay defined this term, he said, it's more than just passively enduring a circumstance. It is actually taking that circumstance not passively, but being actively involved in that circumstance and turning it into a spiritual victory. And one example or illustration of that would be Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He stayed beneath it. He didn't enjoy it. It says he endured it. Why did he do so? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, there was a joy. There was something. He took that experience of the cross and turned that into that positive spiritual victory. But then the situation, in tribulation, the idea behind tribulation is feeling pressure or the squeeze or the compression or crushing. Now, in the context, it seems to be that the tribulation is that which is imposed upon the Christian from the outside. And so this is something that we have to understand in Christianity, that, that 
suffering tribulation is the norm. John 16 and verse 33, Jesus said, you'll have tribulation in the world. Through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God, Acts 14, 22. It has been granted for us to suffer for Christ, Philippians 1 and verse 29. We know that we were destined for this, that we must suffer affliction, 1 Thessalonians 3, 3 and 4, or that we should not count it, think it strange that the fiery trials have come upon us, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. So we're to remain under and to take tribulations that are pressed upon us. We're to take them and turn them into positive spiritual victories. How do we do that? Here are several things. Number one, by remembering the mercies of God. That's how this chapter begins. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, everything that he has done to redeem you, spoken of in the first 11 chapters. So in essence, if we can trust God with our biggest problem, which is sin, why can't we trust him with the smaller problems of being persecuted for serving him? So we remember that God has solved our, our ultimate problem, and we can trust him in the midst of those smaller problems. Number two, by understanding about growth. We are growing in this process. Romans 5 and verse 3, patience or that suffering produces perseverance. That's why we can exult in our sufferings because it's producing perseverance. It's helping us and stretching us in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, because we're identifying with Jesus himself. Philippians chapter three and verse 10, Paul said, I want to share in his sufferings because it helps me to having walked in the shoes of suffering in a small way, the way that Jesus walked through it, the, walked in those shoes of suffering helps me to understand more who he is. Number four, by loving those who hurt us. Verses 14 to 22, the transformed individual, how are we to be patient in tribulation? How are we to turn it into victory? Overcome the evil with good. Actively do them good and make them our brothers and sisters in Jesus. Finally, remember that we are to be comparing. Paul said in Romans 8 and verse 18 that the sufferings of this age are not worth comparing. It's the picture of scales. If you put the sufferings of this world on one side and the glory to be revealed to us on the other side, they would be absolutely disproportionate. They far outweigh it. And you and I have seen the ugliness and the suffering of this world. We've seen what has been done to the people of God throughout the past. And God says, just like the song, just one glimpse of him and glory will the toils of life repay. We're all going to face tribulation. Some will complain. Others will actively turn them into spiritual victories. The question is, what will we do with tribulation?